Imagine sitting by your window seat, looking out of the passing landscape below, when suddenly an emergency exit door opens right in front of you, causing winds of almost 300 km per hour to start tearing through the cabin and straight into your face. ASEANA Airlines Flight 8124 was a normal domestic flight between Jeju International Airport and Daegu Airport in South Korea. It was scheduled as a fairly short flight, lasting only around 40 minutes, which meant that it would only climb to a cruise altitude of around 21,000 feet before starting to descend again. On board the flight were six crew members and 188 passengers, and among those passengers sitting next to the L3 emergency exit door was a man in his early 30s. He had recently lost his job which was causing him quite a lot of stress and that meant that he was also feeling some real discomfort and anxiety as this flight progressed. He just wanted to get off the aircraft as soon as possible and he absolutely didn't want to wait inside for long after the aircraft had finally landed. At this stage we don't know if mental illness was part of what happened next but it's certainly a very real possibility. Because as the pilots of this Airbus A321 were descending through 650 feet, fully prepared for landing, the passengers suddenly and without warning opened the L3 emergency exit door. As the door slid forward into the airstream, the speed of the aircraft was in the region of 150 knots or around 280 km per hour and part of that incredible airflow now came rushing into the cabin, hitting at least nine passengers seated in the three rows next to and behind the door. Most modern aircraft today have what we refer to as plug type doors. They're called that way because when they're closed they effectively plug the exits and in order to open them they need to be moved first slightly inwards into the cabin and then often upwards out of their closing mechanisms. Modern passenger aircraft all have pressurized passenger cabins which enables them to fly as high as they do and still let the passengers breathe normally without the help of oxygen masks or other breathing aids. That pressurization is done by pushing air into the relatively airtight cabin, creating a pressure inside the cabin that we can actually control. We can then let out as much of that pressure as we need through a hole in the back of the aircraft known as the outflow valve. Because we're doing that and the air pressure in the atmosphere outside the aircraft keeps falling as we climb higher, they will start to develop a pressure differential between the inside and the outside of the cabin, much like the inside of a balloon which is being inflated. This difference is known as differential pressure, or diff pressure in short, and it's closely monitored by two separate automatic pressurization controllers, as well as by house pilots who regularly monitor this and the rest of the life support system on board during the flight. The pressurization of the cabin starts when we set takeoff thrust while we're still on the runway, and we actually stay pressurized until after the landing rollout, meaning that the cabin altitude is actually a bit lower than the airport altitude, both during the takeoff and then during the first seconds of the landing. Now, the reason that we do that and actually pressurize a bit early and keep it a bit later than what we actually need is to avoid sudden uncomfortable pressure changes inside of the cabin as the aircraft becomes airborne and when it lands. And the result of that is that the pressure inside the cabin will be higher than outside for the entire duration of the flight. And because the plug type doors needs to be moved slightly inwards to be opened, it means that all of that air pressure will be pressing up against the door surface. Now, the idea was that that should be enough to keep that initial inwards movement from happening and therefore keep the doors closed as long as the cabin is being pressurized. The diff pressure will gradually increase from very low levels at low altitudes, as low as 0.1 psi, up to a maximum of around 8 psi when the aircraft reaches its cruise level. Just to illustrate what kind of forces we're talking about, a typical Airbus entry door is about 78 inches high and 40 inches wide. That gives a full door surface of around 3120 square inches. So if the diff pressure at cruise altitude is 8 psi or pounds per square inch, then we're looking at a force of 24,960 pounds or 11,321 kilos keeping that door shut. That force would obviously be utterly impossible to overcome by any human and even if the incredible Hulk would be on board and try to open it, he would just end up breaking the door lever before the door would uh, actually start moving. This is why I and other pilots have been previously saying that it would be utterly impossible to open a door like this once the aircraft is being properly pressurized. But obviously this incident did just happen, so let's start looking closely and try to figure out why. Like I mentioned before, the door will need to be moved slightly inwards and then upwards before it can be opened under normal circumstances. But the doors are really heavy and the crew can't be expected to lift them, pull them using their arm strength, 
when they want to open them. So they need some kind of leverage and this is where the door lever comes in. To open the door, this lever is moved upwards, which then pulls the door inwards and lifts it out of its seated position enough to then be able to slide it fully open. And there is a possibility that this lever mechanism might give enough leverage to overcome the diff pressure force on very low altitude, if a person really, really tries. Now, here's also where a difference in design between Boeing and Airbus doors becomes quite important. Because on Boeing doors, the ones that I've been showing in my videos, the door lever is also used in a similar way. It's moved in a kind of clockwise movement to pull in and then lift the door and enable its opening. But after that, the Boeing doors needs to be swung around their hinge points forward in order to be opened. This means that a Boeing 737 door would have to be swung open into the airstream in order to open it if the aircraft was moving, similar to how you would open a normal door in a house, for example. But on the Airbus, the doors works slightly differently. Airbus uses a parallel motion linkage system, which by the help of two guide arms in the top and a huge support arm in the middle, moves the door forward in a kind of sliding motion, exposing much less of the door surface into the wind, kind of like how a sliding door would do it. This design makes them much easier for cabin crew to operate, especially in windy conditions on the ground. But in this case, it might also have made the in-flight opening of the incident door easier. But then we come to the next really big design difference, which likely is one of the key pieces in explaining this puzzle. Because in order for the parallel motion of the Airbus doors to move smoothly, the doors are also fitted with a kind of damper, which normally slows the sliding movement slightly down. But when the doors are armed, which they always are when the aircraft is moving, well, then this door damper takes on a completely different role. Because when the doors are armed, they need to be readily available in case of an emergency evacuation. And because of that, the doors also need to be able to open as fast and easy as possible. To accomplish that, a canister of pressurized nitrogen is fitted to the damper cylinder that I talked about before. If the door is armed and the door lever is pulled upwards to open it, then that nitrogen will be released into the damper cylinder. And that basically turns the damper into an active assist system by pushing it open. This assist system will be activated after the door lever has been moved upwards and a delay of a few seconds have passed. That delay is deliberately designed to enable the emergency slide below the door to have time to extend before the door is fully opened. The passenger who was sitting next to the door said that he had been fiddling around with the opening lever earlier during the flight. Now, we don't know if he had actually been trying to open the door before, but that's quite unlikely because fellow passengers would have definitely intervened if they saw that he was doing that. In any case, that wouldn't have been possible due to the high diff pressure at higher altitude. But he might have been able to remove the protective plastic cover that is normally fitted over this lever. When the aircraft reached 650 feet on final, he must have suddenly pulled the lever upwards with enough force to overcome the relatively small diff pressure and bring the door out of its seated position. When he did that, he also activated the power assist system in the door since the door was armed at that point. Then the emergency exit slide was activated outside. The slide would have been unfolded into the airstream and immediately ripped off by the 150 knot winds it would have encountered when it opened. That in itself could have ended quite badly if the slide would have entangled in the stabilizer behind it, for example, or even worse, if it would have tried to do this in one of the forward exits, where the slide could have been ripped off and then pulled into one of the engines. The door assist mechanism would have then activated and pulled the door outwards and forward into the airstream, leaving the door fully open to allow the air to come rushing into the cabin. Once the door was fully opened, a mechanical gust lock would have then stopped it from blowing shut again. Now, fortunately, the pilots didn't choose to execute a go-around when they saw the door warning in illuminate in the cockpit, but instead they continued for a normal landing on runway 13 right about one minute later. Pictures of the aircraft show the parallel door guide arms being slightly damaged, the emergency slide gone, but an otherwise undamaged aircraft after it arrived to gate. The passenger in question was immediately arrested by police. 
presumably after getting some medical attention. And later press report indicated that a total of 12 passengers needed to visit hospital after the incident, but no one was badly injured. Finally, I want to answer that question regarding why things weren't sucked or pushed out of the door when it was opened. Well, the reason for that is because the diff pressure, which would normally have caused that suction action, was, like we talked about before, almost non-existent at that altitude, which is also likely why the door was able to be opened in the first place. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.